I learned a few new things this week. Tokyo is all hot and muggy now, and I've found that I need to acclimatize my camera equipment before I go outside and film, or else I get a lot of this. Next, one must always ensure that the bottle cap is screwed on tightly before one shakes an ink bottle. I had a lot of messes to clean up this week. Then there are several ways that you can eat a kiwi. You can slice it in half and then use a spoon to kind of scoop it out. You can peel it and then slice it up. Or you can squeeze it and get kiwi ink. You saw that one coming, didn't you? Well, what you really get is squished kiwi. So today I'll be covering four inks from a small Los Angeles based company called Kiwi Inks. According to their website, every bottle is brewed by hand. With every order, you have the option to customize the properties of your ink for like the wetness and dry time. You can also have a custom color made where you pick your color from a color picker and you give them your hex code and then you can determine if you want some shimmer in it and what color shimmer you want. Their 30 milliliter bottles of ink range in price from about $11 to $15. You can get samples for $3.85. Their custom colors run about $18. Their Trey Colori inks are their most expensive at $24 a bottle. So they're a really good value if you want to try different colors of ink. You don't get a whole lot, but then you don't pay a really high price. Their bottles have a picture of a kiwi and then a swipe of the actual ink on the label. That's pretty neat but they don't have the name of the ink on the bottle. So I ended up putting some washi tape on the back and writing the name of the ink. They sent me a sample of their Trey Calori ink and a teeny tiny thank you note. This is just kind of a short introduction to Kiwi inks. I won't be running each ink through rigorous tests. The first color is emerald green. It's a saturated green with blue shimmer. Here in the splotch test you can see that it looks like it's kind of turquoisey because of the shimmer. But on the back side you can see it's a nice bright green. Here I played around with a Pilot Parallel 3.8 and some flex writing. Don't really pay attention to the dry times because you can customize that. My inks were very saturated and wet. The shimmer showed up where you laid down a bunch of ink. Here is the ink in kind of everyday use. This is my notes for my mineral studies and I used a Himalayan V1 from FPR. And on the chromatography it came out typical of a shimmer ink and where the shimmer stays across the bottom and then the ink lifts up. Except for these, it looks like the shimmer may have also colored the chromatography. It shows the colors of a typical nice bright green of like yellow and blue. And I think the violet part of that is from the shimmer. Next up is my custom color. I used the hex code 014F6B which is a kind of bright blue with a little bit of green in it and a blue-green shimmer. And as you can see, I needed to put the name on the back with washi tape. Here it is with me playing around with a Pilot 3.8. And the shimmer is kind of hard to pick up, but that I kind of like that. And then the flex writing, there was a little more shimmer in that. I picked this to go with my Eboya Hakobune with a Bokomondo textured Ishime turquoise finish. I think it came out a nice match. 
Here is the custom color in everyday writing. And the splotch test looks really similar to the emerald green splotch test, I think mainly because it's the same blue shimmer. But in the back, you can definitely see that it's a blue color. The chromatography basically shows a blue with the shimmer straight on the bottom. And I think the lavender again is from the shimmer. The next color is called liquid copper. It's a red with gold shimmer. Here it is outside on black paper out in the sunlight. Here's what it looks like with a Pilot Parallel 2.4. This was written with a medium nib and the shimmer showed up right there the most. As you can see, there's a bunch of stickers on the bottom here. That's my way of covering up mistakes that I made. The splotch test shows the red showing up through the gold shimmer. That's what gives it a kind of copper look. And the chromatography has the shimmer on the bottom. I think the color that lifted off the shimmer and then red and orange. And next up is Nebula Space Kitty, which is a bluish black ink and blue shimmer with a little bit of purple sheen. Here it is with a Pilot Parallel 6.0. Here it is with Everyday Writing. This is done with a medium nib. It's a nice saturated ink that you could possibly use in a business situation. The front of the splotch test is basically a dark blue shimmer and the backside is kind of a turquoisey black. And on the chromatography you can see the shimmer line on the bottom and then some brown and black and then some blue on top. Next up is their sheen monster, Trey Calori. I would use graffilo paper all the time, but this notebook's just a little bit too narrow for me. But graffilo really shows sheen, and this is a sheen monster. As you can see, it has a really strong purple and red sheen. On this ink, you have that sheen, plus you can pick a shimmer, and then you pick your shade of blue. Here you can see the blue on the back side. On the chromatography, you can basically see that blue, but it looks like all of the color from the shimmer kind of got sucked out too. Reasonable prices, small usable bottles so you can try out different inks, the ability to customize both your shimmer, dry time, and wetness, and supporting a small fountain pen business. You should check out Kiwi Inks.